So I was in car sales for years, and I'm going to give you some red flags and some tips if you're ever at a car dealership. That way you don't get screwed and they don't take advantage of you. A lot of times, as soon as you get there, they're going to pound you as soon as you get to the lot, and they're going to try to get you inside to do something called a needs analysis. And this needs analysis is a really annoying questionnaire, and they're going to try to get you to answer all these questions. That way they know more about you, and they can use that information against you in the future. So don't let them do that. Number two, credit apps. At the end of the day, a credit app doesn't really need to be filled out until you agree on numbers. If you are a payment buyer, go ahead and do your research before, go to a credit union, go to a bank, get pre-approved, you know your rate, it's smart to do, and if you don't know, dealerships also, if they do get you approved for financing in a lot of situations, they get you approved at five, they're going to show you seven, and they get the spread of the difference, and you have to pay the difference in the 2% interest rate over 60 months, it really adds up. So don't let them take advantage of you on that either. Also, another thing is with trades, I like holding the trade out to the end. That way you know your number. Once you get a trade involved, especially in the beginning, they can move numbers around left and right, especially if you don't know your numbers. So if you're just like, oh, I want this on my trade, they're going to be like, okay, I'll give you this in your trade, and then you're going to pay full price for the car. You might not even look over there. So a lot of customers get distracted by like, I want this for my trade, I want this. Hold the trade out to the end, say, hey, hey, I don't even want to get it appraised yet. Let's agree on numbers first, and then be like, you know what? Let me, let, let me, let's go ahead and throw the trade in there. And that way you even have more power on your end because just know the salesman wants to sell the car. The manager wants to sell the car more than you want to buy it, especially now in 2024 when every single lot we go to is completely filled to the brim. I can tell you that they want to sell it 10 times more than you want to. And guess what? Even when the lots were empty, trust me, you had some power because these people want to sell these vehicles at the end of the day and they want to sell them right now. And when a customer is in front of them ready to buy, you have power. It is what it is. Another thing is they want to take full advantage in the F&I box. Like I talked about a minute ago with interest rates, rates, the 2% spread or 3 or 4% spread they want to do on interest rates. There's another thing you got to watch out for. Generally, this is uneducated customers because they, they know that they can't do this to people that know or have bought many cars. They try to say, oh, your payment's 650 when you go back there, 800 whatever. And they're going to say, oh, it's all included. A lot of finance, it's a hard job. It is what it is, the finance advisor. And they're hold to a very high standard. And so when it comes to bad credit people or new buyers, a lot of times if they're not with their family members, they'll just say, yeah, by the way, your your loan required you to buy an extended warranty and all this other other product. So your payment's going to be 650 signed right here, even though if you remove all that product, your payment would only be 400. So the customer's paying additional $200 a month in BS product that they don't even want and probably won't even use, and the finance guy is completely lying and it's honestly against the law in every state I know to do this, but I know a lot of dealerships that partake in this. It's really unfortunate. I've seen it done in person. So it's quite unfortunate and it's really bad that it happens, but it does. So just watch out for that. Things are not included in your payment like that. And just look through your contract and you'll see it. They have to show you the interest rate. They have to show you all that stuff legally, but they're going to try to get it done quick and easy. But a lot of these places are starting to at least record it at least. So it's in, it's on recording because they know a lot of these finance advisors get a real sleazy, especially when their numbers are hard to hit. So just be extremely careful back in that finance box and make sure you have proof of these numbers. Don't try to let them finagle numbers. If you agree on numbers in the front end and then you go back to the box and they're different numbers, yeah, you can go ahead and get up a walkout right there or you can go ahead and get the GM because there's a huge issue there. You need to get that ironed out. Don't just say, oh, it's it, it, I must have looked at it wrong. Make sure you take pictures. Make sure you have everything because guess what? The salesperson is going to try to take that paper from you. Just have it all in writing, in paper. That way you have it or on a picture, you know your numbers. Have it all in writing if they're negotiating especially. So just keep that in mind, guys. There's a few tips to watch out for. Dealerships try to take full advantage of any situation they can. That's the problem. And another thing is... They hold on trades like crazy, but a lot of people already know that. They're going to try to screw you over. If your trade's worth 20, in a lot of cases, if you don't know what your trade's worth, they're going to try to offer you 12. You know what I mean? And a salesperson can actually get a paycheck on the difference, believe it or not, at a lot of dealerships. So it just depends on their pay, how their pay plan is. So it's pretty crazy. And uh, just go to CarMax or something, Carvana, do it online. Just get an idea, at least, of where it's worth. Uh, but at the end of the day, don't let them take advantage because trust me, they definitely, definitely will. 
and I'm not a huge fan of buying any extended warranties. I know some people like them, but I just, I'm not a fan of them just because generally the dealership marks them up so much. And a lot of times your bank and stuff sells them and they don't mark them up so much. So just be careful. You can even shop around on your warranties. Whenever it's a new car, you can still shop around. You don't have to buy it right there. If you're so dead set on buying a warranty on any vehicle, but in my opinion, I don't know why people buy warranties on new cars. I know they're cheaper then, but it's just like, it's a new car. I mean, I just don't get it in my opinion. But hey, let me know what you guys think about this whole subject. Dealerships taking advantage and red flags. Let me know. Have a great day and stay blessed.